Welcome to the Grand Prairie Update. I'm Don Johnson. And I'm Terry Briggs. Crews are busy this week getting ready for the spring series of concerts in the park. After 10 years downtown at Turner Park, the live music event is moving to the summit at Central Park. Officials say the new venue offers a better experience for the musicians and the audience. They are installing a wonderful stage for us. We also have indoor restrooms here, which we've never had before. We're very excited, and the best part of it is we have an indoor rain venue. It's going to be really great. There's a beautiful amount of parking. At Turner Park, we always had limited parking and some problems there. There's, there's beautiful parking lot. There's, there's just no drawbacks. The 2011 Concerts in the Park kick off this Friday at 7 p.m. with the Ron Jones Jazz Quartet. For more information, go online at artsgp.com or call 972-237-8100. 20 feet, keep going, come on, keep going, keep going. The Grand Prairie Fire Department is putting the herd on a new class of recruits. Back, boy, let's go, bring it, come on. Nearly two dozen fire department applicants are testing their stamina on a carefully crafted agility course. Get up there, wave at us. Officials say the course is designed to simulate the physical and mental stresses of a real fire scene, like climbing up and down four flights of stairs. The whole test is, is designed and scheduled out uh, to test an individual's stamina as they go through. Uh, they're, they're, all the events are timed, there's scheduled rest breaks in between, uh, so the, the applicants are taxed uh, to the limit and then given a small rest time to recoup and then taxed again. And uh, it tests their overall physical ability pretty, pretty thoroughly. One wrong at a time. There you go. And the weak economy may be the reason the number of applicants is climbing. This year we uh, had 90 people show up to take the entrance test, and that's a pretty good number for us. Last year, the year before, we were right around 60. Uh, so the, with the economy down, we're having a few more applicants. Make sure you touch your last run. Good job. They also seem to be attracted to the Grand Prairie Fire Department's reputation as a professional but friendly place to work. They got good paramedics. I see them every day in uh, AMH and all these hospitals. Every time I talk to them, they're always happy. I never met one firefighter that worked for Grand Prairie that ever had a frown on his face. So that's kind of the department I want to work for. Nice up tempo. You know, everybody's happy all the time. Love to come to work. Big department, good resources. I love it, and I love the city of Grand Prairie. Well, I uh, chose Grand Prairie mostly because of that the requirements are more stringent. They require paramedic to even apply. And uh, most of the other departments don't, don't require that. So with like Fort Worth and your Dallas, you're going to get 3,000 people that meet the requirements. But Grand Prairie sets a higher standard and uh, makes it a little more difficult to apply. So the odds of getting hired are better. Go down, round the cone. Come around, we'll give your uh Time right here. Yes, sir. Those who fail the agility course today are out for this hiring period. The others still face several more steps before they reach the finish line, including a security check, psychological evaluation, and final interview. For more information about joining the Grand Prairie Fire Department, go to the city's website at gptx.org slash fire or call 972-237-8300. Grand Prairie voters will decide one city council seat, two school board trustees, and a school bond package when they go to the polls on May 14th. In City Council District 3, incumbent William Thorne is seeking another three-year term against Billy R. Nash. Two other council incumbents are running unopposed. Mark Hepworth in Council District 1, Ruthie Jackson in Council District 7 at large. State law only requires holding an election for contested city council races, so only precincts in District 3 will actually be voting for city council. The school district election features only one contested race. Place 1 trustee Tim Johnson faces Steve Pryor. Place 4 trustee John D. Stewart is unopposed. The school district is also seeking approval for a $70 million bond package to finance building maintenance, equipment, and new school buses. For more information about the May 14th election, go to the city's website at gptx.org or call the city secretary at 972-237-8035. Uh, 
Uh, this fence is getting to the point where it's going to have to re be replaced pretty soon. In some sense, Grand Prairie's code enforcement officers have been asked to play the role of referee, and many times it's an easy call. This fence is what I would consider to be a dilapidated fence. The fence is leaning. The fence should be upright and not leaning. Fences and what you need to know, the subject of this edition of Know the Code. Deteriorated, missing panels, or leaning, uh, those things constitute a dilapidated fence. Obviously, the fence on this property needs immediate attention, so the code enforcement officer will inform the owner about options. Once we observe a dilapidated fence, our first course of action is to give them a notice. If they're present, we normally will give them a hand notice. We normally give them 10 days to do the repairs to the fence. When you go back and you make repairs or replacing, replacing a fence, it needs to be done with like material. Like for instance, the, the, the metal poles should be wooden poles. And actually, there are three options when it gets to this point. You can repair it or replace it but you can also remove it, unless it is what is known as a required fence. If your home is near a commercial property, it's called a required fence. That means the fence has to be there and has to be there and, and maintained. And normally a required fence separating residential property from commercial property, that fence is normally put there by the commercial property owner. And Reagan says that even when repairing or replacing the fence are the only options, the city is willing to work with you because they're well aware of the cost for repairs or building a new one and the penalties that will come for those who don't. That penalty is pretty stiff. I, it, the, the price of it is normally set by the courts and it can be upwards of two, three hundred dollars on a on a citation. And that's why we work with them. I mean, if they're going to say, hey, you know what, Randy, I'll get a fence panel and I'll get this one put up this week and I'll do this one next month, we'll work with you. Uh, times are hard for a lot of people, yeah. so we don't mind working with you at all. If you have questions, you can call the Grand Prairie Code Enforcement Division at 972-237-8296 or log on to the city's website, gptx.org, and follow the links to code enforcement. And now, you know the code. If you want an example of how to make green by being green, just take a look at Monotex in Grand Prairie. This local business is the destination for thousands of obsolete computers, monitors, printers, and other electronic devices. Monotex contracts with cities, companies, and other customers to recycle their electronic waste. First thing it'll go through is a, kind of a triage um, uh, sorting process where we will uh, classify the equipment as to whether it's good for remarketing, reuse, or recycling. Uh, the time is anywhere from 7 to 12 days uh, for a, a truckload of equipment that comes in. By the time it makes its way through the sorting uh, process, through the demanufacturing process, and then all the way to its uh, individual end, uh, end product. According to Segovia, about 20 to 25 percent of the material is refurbished and resold. The rest is shredded or pulverized for scrap. The biggest change I think we can we can say that we've had is uh, it's just the size, the scale of the operation has definitely grown over the years. Um, it started out uh, small uh, as uh, we fine-tuned our process and um, we uh, we created some efficiencies and some better processing methodologies. Um, really, that's I think the biggest change that we've had. The the, the process itself has grown. Uh, more equipment is uh, is coming in the door. Segovia says the Grand Prairie plant has developed into one of the highest volume e-waste processors in the southwest. That's good for the company's bottom line and it's good for the local environment because all of this old technology is staying out of the landfill. So 
in our lives. <laughs> you know what, Matt? Grand Prairie is getting some international attention this week. The city is hosting a delegation from France as part of the Rotary Club's foreign exchange program. The visitors are getting a look at city recreation and tourism sites like the summit at Central Park. This place is gorgeous. I wish we had that in France because I would love to come here and spend some time and meet people. And I know a lot of people in France who have nothing to do and are feel so lonely. And because everything is so expensive, they cannot afford a place like this. Grand Prairie is the first stop on a month-long tour that will take the French visitors to 12 North Texas cities. Grand Prairie will return the favor next month when it sends a Rotary delegation to France. That's it for this edition of Grand Prairie Update. Don't forget you can watch all our Channel 16 programs by going online at gptx.org slash gptv.